Sophie, you promised you would. I said it would depend on how I felt after I finished shopping, and right now I feel fine. The doctor's right over there. Won't you please go in and see oh, him for me? Oh, Audra, dear, I promise you, the minute Dr. Mara gets home from his vacation, I'll go in and have a complete checkup. I don't understand. No one in this town will take a chance on a new doctor. Now, this new doctor, he wouldn't be young and handsome, would he? I don't know, but... But you've heard that he is, and you'd like to find out for yourself, hmm? Mother, how could you think... Anyway, you haven't any objections to going to a young, good-looking doctor, have you? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. I'll be out in a moment. Uh, please be seated. Vienna School of Medicine. Very impressive. I wonder why he came here. Well, whatever the reason, I think the people in this town should be glad that he did come to Stockton. He could have gone elsewhere. Yes, I suppose he could have. I'm afraid that chemical reactions... I'm afraid the chemical reactions over a Bunsen burner don't have the courtesy to wait while a doctor greets his patients. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Dr. Belden, and I'm most sorry to have kept you waiting. Well, I hope we didn't interrupt anything important. I assure you, you have not, uh, Mrs. Barclay, Victoria Barclay. This is my daughter, Audra. So nice to meet you, Doctor. It's entirely my pleasure. You know, in the uh, short time I've been here, I heard more about your family than I have about Stockton. Well, I wouldn't believe everything I've heard. Please, make yourselves comfortable. Doc. Found him hanging in the livery stable. He was barely breathing when I cut him down. This way. Mr. Gibbons? That's right. Everett Gibbons tried to take his own life? No. The way he was tied up, somebody tried for him. <clears throat> Easy. If you'll wait outside, please. Victoria, I'm sorry you had to see this. I know you and Everett have been friends for many years. Thirty years. Well, <clears throat> I gotta be going. Well, Doc, thanks. You did the best you could. Considering. <laughs> considering? What, I wonder? The Dr. Marar might have been able to save him if he'd been here? If I were, perhaps... Twenty years older, more experienced. Doctor, when I was a child, I had a silly cold that was struck by lightning. And when she died, and for a long time after that, I blamed those that tried to save her. You see, I didn't understand. Understanding takes time. 
a great deal of time. <clears throat> Perhaps. People have to get to know you. Doctor, tomorrow evening I'm having the publisher of the Stockton paper for dinner. Won't you join us? Well, thank you. I'd, I'd like to very much. Good. Shall we say 7.30? 7.30 it is. Thank you again. Mother, didn't you want to ask the doctor something about yourself? Ask me uh, what? She hasn't been feeling well these past few days. Oh, it's nothing serious. I have been a little bit under the weather. You were running a fever last night. Only because it was very warm and I was tired. And if I don't look well now, doctor, it's because it's lunchtime and I'm very hungry. Well, if you're sure, you know it'll only take... No, no, it won't be necessary, doctor. My children have a tendency to over-worry about my health. They, uh... They don't know I plan to outlive them all. <laughs> Good day. Good day. There you are, Martin. Thank you, Victoria. More cake. Oh, no thanks. However, I could use a spot of brandy in this coffee, if Jared would have a mind. Just as soon as I put this 12 ball in a corner pocket. Then I'll help myself. That'll cost you. And you too, if a good doctor's eye is as sharp as it's been all evening. I'm afraid it's a more question of pure luck than a sharp eye. I haven't played pool in years, not since my father taught me as a boy. concentration. I was just wondering if your father was as cautious as you are. My father wasn't cautious in the least. Uh, a 12 ball in the uh, corner. Your father did a good job. You're winning, sir. Now, how about a chance to recoup? You, baby. I've still got a special edition to put to bed. A special edition? What about Martin? Ev Gibbons' murder. Oh. Is there some new development? You might say that. The sheriff found a note in the livery stable yesterday. I must have pinned it to Ev's body and it fell off. It was done in straw. Oh, wait a minute, sir. You made a tracing of it. For what they did together, all will die as he did. Well, that looks like the scrawlings of a child. I know. Now, obviously, the meaning didn't come from the mind of a child. But what they did together, all will die. Kind of sounds like he intends to kill again. Yeah, that's what we're afraid of. Sounds frightening. Yes, I know, Audrey. But the one thing about a killer is that he always trips himself up. Well, I've got to go. Oh. Victoria, it's been delightful as always. And I wish you'd invite me more often. We don't see enough of each other. You know, you've been looking a mite on the pale side this evening. I've never known you not to have roses in those cheeks. I never felt better. Don't bother to show me out. I know the way. Jared? Audrey? Good nice meeting you, Doctor. Oh, um, I'll see we get your name in print so folks will know you're around. Thank you. Good night, Victoria. Good night. Well, I'd better be running along, too. Oh, can't you stay for another cup of coffee? Thank you, but it is getting late, and uh, Mr. Erskine is right. You are looking a little pale. But may I suggest some rest? There have been a few cases of influenza going on. Oh, I'm sure it's nothing but a slight cold, but thank you for your concern, and thank you for coming tonight. This has been the most delightful evening I've spent since I've been in Stark. Good night, Audra. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Good night. I'll see you to the door. I'm almost done, Father. Only one more.
Barbara. Jerry, what are you doing up so late? I was doing some reading and dozed off. What's your excuse, young lady? Do you realize it's past 3 o'clock in the morning? Jared, I'm worried about Mother. She's been restless all night, and now she has a fever. A fever? All right, I'll ride into town and get Doc Belton out here right away. Jared, I know it's late, but this is very important. Yes, of course. Come on in. Thanks. Well, it's happened again. Martin Erskine was killed tonight. What? How did it happen? Same way. I found him in his office. He'd been hanged just like Gibbons. It's impossible to believe. Was there another note? Yeah. Yeah, there was. That's why I'm here tonight. Read it. This is number two, Sweet Dreams of... Victoria Barclay. You're number three. Jaron, what was your mother's connection with Evan Martin? None. None at all, except that they were friends. Good friends. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But beyond that, that first note said, for what they did together, all will die as he did. Now, were they partners in anything? In no, business no, or something? No, never, never. Hmm. Jared, I think you better get your mother down here. We got to talk uh, to her. No, no, Sheriff, I don't want to wake her. She hasn't been feeling well, and this would only... Yeah, yeah well, all right, but we got to talk to her as soon as possible. Meanwhile, she's got to have protection. I'll take care of that. Nick's out on the West Range. I think I'll get him back here, too. Well, that's a good idea. How about Heath? No, he's up in the hills chasing mustangs. There's no way to reach him. Sheriff, do you mind if I make a tracing of this? Oh, right ahead. Think someone might recognize the handwriting? I plan to find out. It's unbelievable. Just unbelievable. First, Mr. Gibbons, then Erskine, and now your mother. Now, don't worry about her. She'll be well protected. Yes, of course. And you did the uh, right thing in not telling her. I'm sure it's nothing serious with Mother, but we'd all feel better if you take a look at it. Oh, yes, certainly. Good. Thanks, Doc. By the way, Audra doesn't know about the note either. I think it's better to leave it that way until we have some answers. Mm. I won't say a thing to her. Good. Maybe I'll see you at the ranch later. Yeah, everything about it. I just told Audra I got home sooner than I expected, is all. Anything new? No, not really. I took the note over to Emily Pearson to see if she might recognize the handwriting. Looks like it was written by some kid. It wasn't written by a kid. Whoever wrote it wants us to think that. Doc Belden is still here? Yep. Why? Well, at first he thought it was influenza. But now he knows it's pneumonia. She's wrong. 
Thank you, son. If you believe that, then I'm not alone. I'll never be alone. You're not alone, Father. There's so, someone in here. Hmm. Uh, no, there's, uh, there's no one here, Mrs. Barkley. Perhaps you heard someone in the hall. What is that? Something to make you sleep. No. No, no, I don't want to sleep. I don't want to sleep. Please, Mrs. Barclay. Oh, you're not. ill. This will help you. I want to see my family. Where are my sons? My daughter. I want to see them. Please, doctor. Please. They are my reason for living. Don't you understand? If you take them away from me, if you don't let me see them, I will die. Oh, no. Oh, I'm crazy. Jared. Oh, I'm Oh. You'll sleep now, Mrs. Barkley. <sighs> Yes? Dr. Belden, it's Audrey. May I come in? Dr. Belden? You'll live now, Mrs. Barkley, I promise. You've just given me every reason for a mother to live. Is something wrong? No. No, she's sleeping. You look tired. Why don't you get some rest? Oh, you're the one who needs rest. Please, uh, why don't you try to sleep? I'll call you if there's any change. Oh, no, really, I, I couldn't. Nick will show you where the guest room is. Well, if you insist, I'll nap for a few minutes on the sofa in the hall. All we can do now is wait. Would you come in, Doctor? Oh, Audra. No. That can't be the same patient I saw there a little while ago. Hello, Doctor. Would you look at it? I just can't believe it. Yes. There's no doubt about it. The fever's broken. You ought to be able to celebrate in a few days if you do exactly as I say. Uh, the temperature seems to be normal now, but it's very important that you keep warm and rest. Plenty of rest, along with uh, a teaspoon of this every three hours. Audra says you've been here since four o'clock. For this moment, I would gladly have come sooner. Thank you very much, Doctor. No thanks are necessary. I only did what had to be done. Oh, when this bottle's used up, would you stop by my office? I'll refill it. Afternoon, Jared. Nick. Afternoon. Oh, well, how's your mother feeling? Much better, thanks. Be up and around a couple of days. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Nick, things been quiet around here? Yeah. What brings you out, Sheriff? 
This telegram came from Martin Erskine this morning. From Martin? Yeah. Janet Davis died insane two years ago. Whereabouts of son unknown. Would have answered sooner, but the catfish are biting. Regards, Jackson, St. Louis Courier. So? I didn't think much about it at first, Nick, but uh, then I realized that Martin telegraphed St. Louis just hours after we found Everett Gibbons in the livery stable. Janet Davis. You know, it's funny, I remember that name, but I don't know why. Yeah, well, I wired that Jackson fellow in St. Louis, and here's the answer I got. Shocked over tragic death of Martin Erskine regarding Janet Davis, suggest you refer to Stockton Eagle Bank files for full account on her husband, Emery Davis, and Miner's Bank failure. Miner's Bank? That was years ago. Yeah, well, I think we ought to investigate this whole thing further. All right. Best place to start would be Martin's office. Good. I'll meet you back in town. Fine. Nick, I'll spill you just as soon as I get back. Jared? Are you going into town? I have to get Mother some medicine. Can I go with you? Why, Miss Barkley, I should be delighted to have your enchanting company. Nick, what did the sheriff want? Uh, well, we lost a couple of head of cattle, and, well, he had a couple of leads he thought we should know about. Your carriage awaits. Now, what is all that with the hand kissing? Crude fellow. Knows nothing of continental manners. Get up. Continental man. Oh, I'll be in my office for a few hours, so I'll pick you up about three, all right? Fine, I have some shopping to do anyway. Yeah. If you're planning to go in and see that doctor, well, I just wouldn't advise it. Of oh, all the nerve! Mrs. DeCoven, what happened? In 20 years, Dr. Mara never asked me to take my clothes off. Audra, I warned you now. Audra. Dr. Belden. Shame on you. I just saw Mrs. Dakota. Oh. Well, unfortunately, uh, I'm discovering that diagnostic techniques have advanced more rapidly than some patients' understanding. I trust that your mother is improving. Well, she doesn't want to stay in bed any longer, and she's starting to give orders again. Ah, that's a sure sign of recovery. Yes, thanks to you. She's a good patient. And I might add, she has a very competent nurse by her side. Well, I did try to keep after her to take her medicine. She finished it this morning. Good. I'll, uh, I'll refill it. Just take a few minutes. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Uh, keep this up much longer. I'm gonna need glasses. What are you doing? Just going through these indexes again. Martin published a pretty good newspaper, but he sure didn't know anything about keeping records. <laughs> G's filed under W. Here, take a look at this. First Zeldin's obituary, filed under O. <laughs> now, wait a minute. O for obituary. Well, we looked under D for Davis. Where do you suppose it'd be? I don't know. Why don't you start over here? I'll take these, and we'll check every file in here. Oh, there we are. Thank you. Well, I know you must be busy, so I'd better be going. I was thinking of taking the day off. Uh, maybe taking a quiet drive through your beautiful countryside. I find that most relaxing. That sounds lovely. I... I was thinking... Perhaps you'd do me the honor of joining me? Well, thank you, but I'm supposed to meet my brother at three. I'll have you back before three, I promise. Well, I... Uh, the idea doesn't appeal to you? On the contrary, I'd love to go. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, if you just wait outside, I'll close up the office.
something wrong, Doctor? Well, for one thing, that, uh, that doctor, it's, uh, it's pretty formal under the circumstances. Do you suppose we could make it, Jim? All right, Jim. That's better. Uh, there's, um, there's an old ranch house down that road. I've been there on several occasions. It fascinates me. Would you like to see it? If you'd like. Well, perhaps you'd rather go on. No, no, I, I'd like to see it. Good. Good. Despondent over failure of the Miners Bank, which closed its doors after this newspaper revealed that Davis had overextended the bank's capitalization, investing in worthless mining ventures. Heavy withdrawals created a run on the bank and forced its closure when depositors learned that the principal investors, namely Everett Givens and Victoria Barclay, had withdrawn their funds in support for what they did together. Bart made a note here. See follow-up June 15th. Jared, here it is. Widow leaves town, Mrs. Emery Janet Davis, with her nine-year-old son, departed this morning's stage. He's bound for St. Louis, presumably to take up new residence in that city. The Davis family holdings, including the ranch home, northeast of town, have been turned over to the county clerk for disposition. Well, that must be that old place that the county is always trying to sell every year for taxes. Yeah. Son finds body hanging in study. Sheriff, why don't we get a couple of horses and take a little ride? There's something about being here. It must be the quiet. As though time's standing still. Any man who would build something like this must have had a wife. Children. I mean, look around. Isn't this an expression of love? You have quite an imagination. Perhaps. show me around, didn't you? Yes. Yes, of course. Why else would I bring you here? You must imagine the house as it was. With uh, fresh paint and paper. 
comfortable furniture. And there was always a fire in the fireplace. Right now, that's not too easy to imagine. Really, I... I can see it very clearly. Like it was a billiard room. Yes, this was the billiard room. Perhaps you'd uh, prefer to see the, the kitchen. It's, it's back that way. Don't be frightened. I'm not going to hurt your mother. No. No, that would be senseless. Waste. She as much as said so herself, you know. Her death would prove nothing. Well, what yours? Hey, see? See, your mother would suffer that. As he suffered. And as my mother suffered. You see? Audra. Audra. It'll... It won't take long. No. no. <laughs> Audra. It won't take long. I told you, it won't take long. And you see, Father... Father would be so pleased. <laughs> Be different. 
stay with you. Don't you understand? I don't want to do it. But I must. No, no, no. Shh. Yes. Father expects it. Yes, I must. I can't let him down. I got to do it for him. Don't say that. That's that's not true. I mean, he, he wouldn't believe you. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. Please. Sounded like velvet. Yeah, around back. Listen to me, I have to. Father expects it. Velvet. Who are you? Go away. You know, right here. You better get off this ranch. This is my father's ranch, you know. Where's Audra? What have you done with her? Nothing. I haven't done anything. She... I guess she didn't like it here. Why'd she run away? Go away! You hear me? Go away! Follow it, Doc. Right there. I'll tell. You can't stop me. You know right. You can't stop me. Go away! She's hungry. Silas bought her a bowl of soup, but uh, she'd have none of that. I think she wants a steak about three inches thick. Well, that's a good sign. Where is she? She's in the gun room with Mother. Oh. Uh, remember, Chef, she likes it nice and rare. Well, you ladies are looking lovely this evening. Jared. Mother, Audra. Is it over? Yes, Audra, it's over. We buried him beside his father. It's all so hard to believe. He seems so kind, so gentle. Oh, Audra, you know, I've been thinking about those notes he left. It's almost as though he wanted someone to stop him, wanted to be caught. Jared, maybe someday there will be a better understanding of things like this. Maybe. Well, I am starved. I think I'll join you in one of those three-inch steaks. Hmm. Now, why can't I do that when I'm playing for money? Mother, you promised you would. I said it would depend on how I felt after I finished shopping, and right now I feel fine. The doctor's right over there. Won't you please go in and see oh, him for me? Oh, Audra, dear, I promise you, the minute Dr. Mara gets home from his vacation, I'll go in and have a complete checkup. I don't understand. No one in this town will take a chance on a new doctor. Now, this new doctor, 
He wouldn't be young and handsome, would he? Well, I don't know, but... But you've heard that he is, and you'd like to find out for yourself, hmm? Mother, how could you think... Anyway, you haven't any objections to going to a young, good-looking doctor, have you? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. I'll be out in a moment. Uh, please be seated. In a school of medicine. Very impressive. I wonder why he came here. Well, whatever the reason, I think the people in this town should be glad that he did come to Stockton. He could have gone elsewhere. Yes, I suppose he could have. I'm afraid that chemical reactions... I'm afraid the chemical reactions over a Bunsen burner don't have the courtesy to wait while the doctor greets his patients. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Dr. Belden, and I'm most sorry to have kept you waiting. Well, I hope we didn't interrupt anything important. I assure you, you have not, uh, Mrs. Bartley, Victoria Bartley. This is my daughter, Audra. So nice to meet you, doctor. It's entirely my pleasure. You know, in the uh, short time I've been here, I heard more about your family than I have about Stockton. Well, I wouldn't believe everything I've heard. Please, make yourselves comfortable. Doc. Found him hanging in the livery stable. He was barely breathing when I cut him down. This way. Mr. Gibbons? That's right. Everett Gibbons tried to take his own life? No. The way he was tied up, somebody tried for him. <clears throat> Easy. <clears throat> if you'll wait outside, please. You promised you would. I said it would depend on how I felt after I finished shopping, and right now I feel fine. The doctor's right over there. Won't you please go in and see oh, him for me? Oh, Audra, dear, I promise you, the minute Dr. Murat gets home from his vacation, I'll go in and have a complete checkup. I don't understand. No one in this town will take a chance on a new doctor. Now, this new doctor, he wouldn't be young and handsome, would he? I don't know, but... But you've heard that he is, and you'd like to find out for yourself, hmm? Mother, how could you think... Anyway, you haven't any objections to going to a young, good-looking doctor, have you? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. I'll be out in a moment. Uh, please be seated. In a school of medicine. Very impressive. I wonder why he came here. Well, whatever the reason, I think the people in this town should be glad that he did come to Stockton. He could have gone elsewhere. 
Yes, I suppose he could have. I'm afraid the chemical reactions... I'm afraid the chemical reactions over a Bunsen burner don't have the courtesy to wait while a doctor greets his patients. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Dr. Belden, and I'm most sorry to have kept you waiting. Well, I hope we didn't interrupt anything important. I assure you, you have not. Uh, Mrs. Barclay, Victoria Barclay. This is my daughter, Audra. So nice to meet you, Doctor. It's entirely my pleasure. You know, in the uh, short time I've been here, I heard more about your family than I have about Stockton. Well, I wouldn't believe everything I've heard. Please, make yourselves comfortable. Doc. Found him hanging in the livery stable. He was barely breathing when I cut him down. This way. Mr. Gibbon? That's right. Everett Gibbons tried to take his own life? No. The way he was tied up, somebody tried for him. <clears throat> Easy. If you'll wait outside, please. Sorry, I'm sorry you had to see this. I know you and Everett have been friends for many years. Thirty years. Well, <clears throat> I gotta be going. Well, Doc, thanks. You did the best you could. Considering. <laughs> Considering. <laughs> 